Almost every house, garden or apartment block has at least one hedge. Often, there are several. Today, I'm gonna to share with you my top tips on how to keep your hedges looking full and healthy, including when to cut them and how often, the different cutting equipment available, and how to get that sharp looking hedge that everybody wants. Keeping our hedges full and healthy is really important, not only to have it looking great, but to help it fulfill its purpose as screening, dividing, edging, or for creating privacy. When a section is unhealthy or not performing like it should, it can look horrible and start to expose what's on the other side. To keep your hedge healthy, you first need to remove all the grass and weeds growing under it to prevent any competition for water and nutrients. The next thing to do is feed the hedge at the beginning of spring and again at the start of autumn with an organic pellet fertilizer. Pellets provide a slow release of essential nutrients, keeping your plants happier for longer. You'll also need to mulch around the base of the hedge once a year with a wood chip, loosen or compost mulch to around 50 to 60 millimetres in depth. It also really helps to spray the hedge with Hoseling seaweed tonic every two to three weeks during spring and summer. This makes the plant stronger and more resistant to pest, disease and stress. I recommend cutting the hedge back at least twice a year to keep it compact and in shape. When to cut your hedge varies dramatically depending on factors like plant type, location, weather, how much sunlight they receive and a list of other things. But I find these general guidelines cover most bases. Flowering hedges should be cut back right after flowering. This ensures that the new flower buds they produce stay nice and tight to the hedge and are not on the longer growth that will be cut off, leaving you with little to no flowers. Flowering hedges can still be lightly pruned during the growing months to keep them neat and tidy, but you will have to sacrifice a few flowers. Non-flowering hedges should be cut back into shape at least twice a year and lightly pruned throughout the growing months. For my first cutback, I like to wait until that big burst of fresh new spring growth has slowed down. If you do it too early, it can grow back really fast and you may have to add a third cut to the calendar. I save my second cut back for mid to late autumn when all the growth has slowed down. This way our hedges will keep their shape through winter and there's no risk of the new growth getting damaged by frost or cooler weather. When choosing a day to cut your hedge, try and choose a cooler day and if possible, an overcast day like today. This will reduce the risk of the newly exposed foliage being burnt by the sun. There are three main types of hedging tools. You've got your big powerful petrol hedges, the new kit on the block, the battery hedger, and then of course, we've got our old fashioned hand shear. They are all great and have many advantages, but they do have their downsides too. Handheld shears, like these Hoseling two-in-one head shears, are great for doing finer detailing, smaller hedges, or topiary. Plus, they won't burn or tear the foliage like most motorized hedges do. However, they can be really time consuming and a little harder to master. Petrol hedges are great for heavy cutbacks and trimming thicker branches. I also find they work much better on all of the conifer hedges, but they do get quite heavy after a while and need regular refueling, which should never be done over any lawn or garden as any fuel that spills will kill whatever it touches. The battery hedges have come a long way over the last few years. Their batteries can now last for hours. They are much more durable and they are ideal for when you have a lot of hedging to cut as they are much lighter and quieter than the petrol hedges. They are also a lot faster than using hand shears. However, you do have to have a power point nearby and wait some time for the battery to recharge. Before you get started cutting, it's really important we make sure our tools are disinfected, cleaned and sharp. I disinfect my tools with a diluted household bleach. This will also help remove any sap build up on the blades. Everybody wants to have that perfectly straight hedge but it's never as easy as it looks. Like most things, practice is the only way to get better. So I thought I'd share some of my top tips to help you get started. Before you start, lay down a tarp or old sheet on the ground. This way, most of the cuttings fall onto it and makes the cleanup much quicker and easier. When cutting with shears, try to keep a nice constant speed and keep the blades as flat as possible. When cutting the top, continually get down and check the height at eye level. When cutting the sides, Try and stand close to the hedge so you can see down the line that you're wanting to cut. Battery and petrol hedges use the same method for cutting. When cutting the tops, try and keep the blade as level as possible and your arms in the same position the whole time, only pivoting your body to move the hedger. When cutting the sides, once again, get close to the hedge to see down the line you're wanting to cut. We then try to keep the trigger hand as still as possible, using the other arm to do all the work making sure you go straight up and straight down. After you've done the tops and sides, 
it's a good idea to walk along the hedge with some secateurs and nip off anything you may have missed, especially down low close to the ground. Now, if you really want a perfectly straight hedge and you need just a little more help, you can set up a string line. To do this, just grab a couple of garden stakes and a string, then set the line to around 60 millimeters above the desired height so you don't cut the string, and away you go. I hope that helps with all your hedging questions. Now sharpen those tools and get trimming. <laughs>